Uh, how are snapshots different than the presets? The presets are like, all right, um, you want a locker room? You want it to sound like a locker room? It's like a preset on a reverb. You know? Uh, not, uh, yes, you can. I've not done it yet because mostly what I'm doing is just snapshots of the whole thing. So I, I have all three profiles, all three things. Any more questions? As far as time goes, uh, we've probably about 15 more minutes. Okay. Uh, I know that there's a section that we could not show on the live stream. Is that right. what you want to move on to right now? Um, no, we can hold off, but I think we've covered most of it anyway. Um, so if you want, we can walk through some more of the RX stuff, because a lot of people have questions, I know, about using RX Advanced and different tools for different things. So you guys want to move on? Should we move on? Do you have any more questions on Dialog Match? I have, uh, one oh, sure. Um, <coughs> with uh, Dialog Match, uh, I don't remember what it was. Oh. Um, have you ever ran into an issue um, where, like, you select your whole scene and you do it not clip by clip, but you render it um, with continuous files? Yeah, uh, yeah, with a selection. Have you um, ran into any situations that it would not work at times where you had like your crossfade set or all that stuff? Uh, I've not had that problem uh, because I rarely render continuous files. I mean, I'm, I'm from the school of thought that you should just fix and render just the piece you need at a time. Or if you do a block, do it in clip by clip. That way you still have your handles and you still have your clip game. Um, because you, it, you never know when you need to unwind it, right? Uh, and, and that's always been the most important thing. Like never, I never try to box the mixer in. I always try and give them a path back to where I started if I can. That's not always possible. Sometimes it gets more involved. Um, and by the way, so the, the generally um, there was a kind of a tug of war that went on in the beginning because traditionally the, a level of, of cleanup work that I was doing was not really done by most standard dialogue editors. And when I got to shows that where they were po what I consider the of the post-apocalyptic genre, um, I was kind of encouraged to do more. And then as they could see what my skill level was, they started giving me more and more, like, you know, take out all the birds. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a happy show. Take the birds out. Okay. Uh, and... I just, you know, I'd open up a sound file and I'd find the first bird, I'd, s I'd draw around it, and then I would be like, oh, find all. <laughs> find all, you know, and then I would use a spectral repair to just bloop, make it go away. You know, take all the birds out. <laughs> birds, dog barks, e uh, yeah. Uh, t but t mostly, like, a lot of the stuff is take the technology out. Take out any motors, generators, airplanes, trains, automobiles, horn honks, you know, construction sites. Uh, and this is all just one episode, um, <laughs> you know. And, and that's the problem. Um, and then until we got to the episode with the rain. Um, and discovered something after talking to some effects guys about um, water on, on sets, you know. Like a shower is one thing. Great, okay, just turn the water off and have them kiss again and say their lines with the water off. I'll stuff them in the mouth, and stuff the words in their mouths, I'll make it work. Um, but, you know, rain, like rain machines are really like, just, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. Because it's about the same thing as the nails on a chalkboard. You know, a rain head has, uh, ha makes a harmonics for, the, it squeals. So it squeals, and then you're gonna put an actor down in the water in the rain uh, no mic on him because he's wet. You can't put a wire on him. Um, and then the, the crew will be under a tent, right, below the rain machine. So you have the sound of the water hitting the tent, water splashing on the leaves that the actor is laying on without a mic, and he's wet. And the boom operator is there. You can hear the water hitting the Zeppelin, right? <laughs> And they're wondering if we have to loop it. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> just turn the water off and shoot it again, and I'll make it work. <laughs> we don't have time. So, no, I mean that's really like water is like the like dialogue matching was like the holy grail that we hit, and we're like, well, what's the next holy grail? Water. Make water go away, right? Fountains, showers, you know, sprinklers, you know, you name it. They're, they're really some of the hardest things to take out because there's like water splashing is broadband. If you look at it on the spectrogram, uh, spectrograph, you can see it is a complete horizontal hit. It's a spike, right? About the only thing you can use to attack it is declip. But the problem is if you turn declip too hard, you take the life out of the words. So you have to be very careful about it. Um, and, you know, so water is really one of the hardest things to remove. Other things that are mechanical, jets landing, taking off, sirens, you know, all that stuff, there's a way to get it out in RX. There's usually a way to get it out. Um, but water is still a little tough. How about insects? Do they all right. Oh, my favorite subject. All right. How, how about insects or cicadas? Okay, so cicadas, the, the, uh, crickets are, you know, I've done a whole thing, I don't know if you've seen the video on, on crickets, but like here's the problem with crickets and cicadas it applies to too. They are creatures that change tempo and power over time. So the later you shoot, the faster they go, the louder they get, right? So if you cut together a scene that was shot and there are crickets and you're standing on the side of a road and there are crickets, as you start early on in the evening, they're like chirp, 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 chirp. As, you, as they do the scene over and over again and they st change setups and camera angles, by the time you're like, like 10, 11 at night, they're like chirp, 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 right? So when you cut it all together, it doesn't flow. You just keep bumping. So the only, the only way to really make it work is go in and strip the crickets out, right? Just strip them right out and then make a cricket loop at the nice pace. Make a cricket loop and then just put it underneath. Voila, fixed. So, and I use the strip, uh, by the way, m my favorite way to do it is to just frequency select in, um, in the advanced editor, just frequency select just the crickets, right? That range, and then use dialog isolate and dial it way down, and then ambient match fill back in. And that will take the crickets right out. Cicadas are similar, but the problem is cicadas are a little more broadband. But still, dialogue isolate will work. The sort of, okay, so the general rule of removing noises and unwanted things from dialogue, the dialogue has to be at least twice as loud as the noise you're removing. Because the algorithm has to be able to get around the edges of it. And so if it was recorded at a low level, and then it was, uh, you know, you're trying to pull it out, or it's, it's, it's more than, it's less than twice as loud as the noise, then you have a hard time getting around it to get, and you start losing parts of words. I mean, you can get, you, but it's like, yeah, you know. But still, by the way, an editor in a bay doing this work is still a lot cheaper than a couple of hours of trying to do it on a dub stage. It's so much easier. And, you know, for years, that's what we did with other softwares. It would be like, all right, I'm going to, you know, clean the noise up and you're going to get hard, medium, and soft, right? And it was always hard, too hard, and way too hard, right? <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, then when the mixers ca could get the tool themselves, like they can in RX Advanced on their stage, they can do it. The problem is, though, is they just, you're clicking away at X dollars per hour on the stage. It's cheaper to stick somebody in an edit suite and do it you know, for what you spend on an editor to do it all day, you, you could, you know, get those two hours back on the dub stage. So typically when I clean a, a, a particular show, you know, you'll, you'll get, a, you'll literally, it'll go through the dub stage about two hours faster than others. Do you have a question? Yep. Uh, uh, how, how do you, you deal, deal with, with wanting to remove dialogue from dialogue. Let's say you've got somebody Oh, talking there's a tool. Yeah. And, uh, somebody else oh. chimes in over them that you want to get rid of. Right. So I'm glad you asked. Uh, so there's a, a couple